بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين We continue our reflections on Dua Abu Hamza We reach this point فَرَبِّي أَحْمَدُ شَيْئًا عِنْدِي وَأَحَقُّ بِحَمْدِي After mentioning different things for which we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Starting from Alhamdulillah Alladhi ad'uuhu fayujibuni Then we said Alhamdulillah Alladhi as'aluhu fayu'tini And we continued Now It's the time to make a conclusion We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But not in the way that we praise other people who have good qualities. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one that is the most praised one, the most praiseworthy. Because he has done to us, to other creatures, what others have not done. And if Anyone other than Allah has any good quality, good action also goes back to him. So who deserves my greatest praise? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi Ahmadu Shay'in Indi. He is the most praiseworthy one for me in my sight. And he deserves my praise more than anyone else, anything else. This is one of the sentences that should always remain in our mind. And anytime you have opportunity, you can invocate this as a good zikr. Because it summarizes many things. Rabbi Ahmadu shay'an indi wa ahaqqu bahamdi. If my parents, my friends, my teachers, my leaders, my community, my society, if they have, helped, they have helped me, I have to be grateful, I have to be thankful. Even if a person has given you a cup of water, you have to remember, you have to be always thankful. Even if someone has just sat with you a few minutes and listened to you, when you needed someone to give you a company, you have to be thankful. But at the same time that you are thankful to people for the good things that they have done to you, you should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not forget. We should not say, for certain things, Allah has helped me and I thank him. And for other things, I thank people. If I had, for example, a cancer and is, for example, cured, I thank Allah. But if I had cold and doctor gave me a you know, prescription and I am okay, now I thank doctor. For everything, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter whether someone else has occurred in this chain of the agents under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Allah has directly helped me. We always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another point is, whenever you do something, again, you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not good that I think I am doing good things if I do any. Say, I did this, I did that. No, we don't do anything except just accepting the offer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is giving us everything. We either 
divert it into bad things or we just let it carry on. Like, you know, water is coming from spring, from mountains, from rain. Water is coming. There is a village. What is the role of this village? They can divert it so that other people don't benefit or they can let it go. Our job when we do good things in this world is just we are letting mercy of Allah to carry on, not block it. We are not adding anything to it. Who can say I brought something from my pocket and I added to the mercy of Allah? I did something good. We can never do anything good. In the best scenario, which is very unlikely to happen, we just let it go. Because most of the time we narrow it down. You know, you cannot have, for example, any material. If you have, for example, you want to make a, a lamp. You know, you, you use something like glass because glass is transparent. To protect, you put glass. But you can never find any material which is 100% transparent. There is resistance. Even air has resistance. Yeah? So part of the energy becomes heat because there is resistance. resistance. So, it's very difficult for me to think that we can be 100% open, wide, transparent, so whatever comes from Allah, we pass it on. This is very difficult to think. But even if this happens, still you have not added anything to it. Either you are blocking, or you are reducing, or let it go, maximum. So, even for the things that you do, you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have done anything good, say Alhamdulillah. Allah helped me to do this. If you have been praying, fasting, giving charity to people, bringing reconciliation, whatever good you can do, you should first praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, Say, Alhamdulillah that I didn't <laughs> lose the opportunity. Alhamdulillah the tawfiq that not be the one who rebels against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always we should remember this. Rabbi Ahmadu Shayin Indi wa ahaqu bihamdi. This must always remain in our mind. The next sentence, I read only one more sentence. Allahumma inni ajdu subul al matalib ilayka mutra'a. Oh Allah, I find the path for bringing requests and hajat to you very wide. Some people who might be very much on demand, everyone wants to go to them, they bring restrictions. For example, you can come and see me only in this time. You know, there are some doctors, for example, they give you one hour, they say, for example, early morning between 6 to 7 a.m., you know, we have in Iran, I don't know, in other countries. Between 6 to 7 or 7 to 8, you have to call and make appointment for the whole week. Just one hour, they open, and you have to make the appointment. Otherwise, wait for another week. Because there's so much demand, and they don't know how to cope with, and perhaps there are other reasons, I don't know. So, you have to struggle. And that when, as soon as that time comes, the line is busy. Keep trying, trying. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't get it. Because they cannot cope with the demands of people. So they bring restrictions, conditions, make it difficult. 
so that only those who really struggle can get to them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quite opposite. He makes access to him as wide as possible. Day and night, in any part of the world, in any language, you can call him. And if someone with more difficulty is moving towards him, he is actually more available for him. If in this month of Ramadan there is a person who has not been praying, who has not been fasting, and now says everyone is going to Allah, let me go to Allah. He is new in this, he is burdened with sins, but Allah is more available for him. As soon as he thinks of going to Allah, the doors are open for him. No restriction. Indeed, every encouragement you receive to go to him. Allahumma inni ajidu subul al-matalib ilayka mushra'ah. It's wide open. I hope we don't lose this opportunity to go fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins and give us this determination that we spend the rest of our life, inshallah, at his service. May Allah give shifa to all people who are ill and send his rahmah to all mu'mineen and mu'minat who have passed away. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.